I'm an internist, and I'm going to be talking about the correction of nutritional deficiencies and the role of diet in the treatment of inflammatory bowel disease. There are basically four ways in which nutrition can impact on inflammatory bowel disease. First is that inflammatory bowel disease can cause food intolerance, which then leads to restricted diets. This is usually a reversible phenomenon. Surveys have indicated that the majority of IBD patients avoid specific foods because they aggravate symptoms. This is the result of inflammation when inflammation is controlled by various means, including medication. Those types of food intolerance usually disappear. IBD can also cause nutritional deficits and some of these are really important in the maintenance of inflammation in IBD and in contributing to the complications of inflammatory bowel disease. What has been of particular interest to me is the third point, that dietary patterns may contribute to the development or the perpetuation of IBD. I'd like to start with malnutrition in patients with inflammatory bowel disease, which is much more common in patients with Crohn's disease than ulcerative colitis because there's involvement of the small intestine for many patients with Crohn's disease. There's several mechanisms of that. First of all, there's anorexia, loss of appetite, which aside from being due to illness, may be a direct effect of interleukin-1, an inflammatory mediator that's increased in patients with IBT. There's also a catabolic state, which is due to another inflammatory mediator, tumor necrosis factor alpha, there may be malabsorption due to disease or surgery, nutrient losses through the diarrhea or the inflamed and ulcerated gut, small bowel bacterial overgrowth, a complication of Crohn's disease that's been reported in up to 30% of patients who are hospitalized with Crohn's disease, oxidative stress, which is a result of inflammation and part of the inflammatory cascade. There may be iatrogenic nutrient deficiencies due to restricted diets or to the effects of medication. The 5-ASA derivatives like mesalamine interfere with the absorption of folic acid and so folate deficiency may occur through that mechanism. The particular nutrients that may be depleted, protein as a result of restricted diet or inflammation itself, iron as a result of blood loss, vitamin D because of lifestyle, you're sick so you don't go out in the sun, folate, which is drug-induced, vitamin B12 in Crohn's disease may occur because of malabsorption in the terminal ileum where B12 is mostly absorbed, or because of small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. Vitamin B6, which may be the result of inflammation or malabsorption, zinc, a result of diet or inflammation, selenium, a result of oxidative stress, vitamins A, E, and C, a result of oxidative stress, and the A, E, and C deficiencies have mostly been described in tissue, more so than in uh, measured in circulating blood, and magnesium, which may be the result of diet, diarrhea, or inflammation itself. The effects of these nutrient deficits can be to favor the self-perpetuation of IBD by causing defects in the mechanisms of tissue repair. They may also contribute to the complications of IBT, which include growth retardation, zinc, iron, and protein may be involved there, bone loss, calcium, magnesium, and vitamins D and K may be involved in the osteoporosis associated with IBD, urolithiasis, kidney stones, which can be associated with magnesium or B6 deficiencies, blood clots, which may be associated with B vitamin deficiencies through elevation of an amino acid called homocysteine, or cancer, which may be associated with deficiencies of folate, vitamin D, or selenium. There is more information on the website of the Foundation for Integrative Medicine, it's mdheal.org, and at a website called pilladvice.com, which I created to deal with drug supplement interactions.